What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to learn about packaging our project. So whether you have a game or simulation or whatever it is that you have, you may want to package your project so that others can use it. And, you know, the customer, the end user can actually be able to play it or access it without uh, having Unreal Engine or opening the editor. You know, I can't think of many games I've played. Like, imagine if you're playing, I don't know, Yakuza, and you're like, oh, I have to open up Unreal Engine so that I can play this. It just wouldn't make sense. So we need a way to be able to get this to the user, whether they just get a zip file and play it, whether it goes online and they can download it, whether they use an actual installer that we give them or that they can download online. There's a bunch of different ways it can be done. Today we're going to be going over the packaging process, so basically getting your game or project into a state that can have that, you know, can it's ready to be made into that installable or downloadable form. We won't be going over actual installers today. That's a separate topic, but there are some free ones you can download if you yourself are interested. And uh, you can just basically upload your project to it, and they can get a link to the installer and install your game on their machine. But like I said, this is about packaging. So this is going to work for uh, C++ and Blueprint projects. The only exceptions are there are some extensions that may have uh, different packaging methods you need to use or different boxes you need to check, different things you have to enable or disable. So if you get any errors, feel free to reach out to me in the comments or on Discord, and I'll be happy to look at it and see if I can figure out what's going on. But otherwise, let's get started. So for packaging, uh, there's a few things you're going to want to do, and I'm going to try and hit all of them today. So the first thing we can do to make our lives easier while packaging is actually we can uh, go into, if it's a C++ project, we can go into our code into Visual Studio. We can set our configuration settings or our uh, whatever you want to call this, your your type settings. So we normally run on development editor for the fighting game tutorial series, which is what I'm using this on, but this packaging episode will work for any project and uh, we normally run on development editor so that I can just build it and then launch Unreal by pressing the play button. Now we're going to try to uh, go over all of these so debug game is going to give you the most information but it's also going to be the biggest size. It is going to take up a lot of space because it's going to generate extra files and it's going to have debug files and additional things that are needed to give you uh, proper crash logs and things like that. In some cases, it will even try to prevent errors from happening. So say, for example, if I have, you know, errors in my animation blueprint, some of it, you know, if I'm playing an editor and I have those errors, some of the animations may still be able to play on the character, but the ones with the errors will not be able to. Well, if you were to do this in shipping, then you probably wouldn't be able to use that NMBP at all. It might even crash because there's not really anything in place. Just, oh, I got this error. I'm going to fail out. Debug game will do its best to prevent that, and it will also give you appropriate logging. Development is a mix between the two. It's kind of in the middle. So I think it will still crash and everything about the same degree as shipping, but it will also give you log uh, logs, excuse me. So it will uh, give you more information about the issues that you're running into, but it will also be, it'll take up more space. And for shipping, it's the finalized project. Basically, it's ready to go out. Doesn't mean there won't be errors or any sort of logging because there still can be, but it's just going to be less than the other two, but it'll also be smaller and more efficient. doesn't really matter which one you choose in this case. Um, it, it just depends on your scenario. So I'll pick Debug Game Editor. However, it again, it really doesn't matter. It's going to be up to you. We don't care for today's episode. Uh, if Quick note, if you are Blueprint only or if you have Visual Studio in one window and you have Unreal open in the other window already, you probably want to build in just Debug Game as opposed to Debug Game Editor. And then you will compile in Unreal and then package using that type in Unreal. However, since I launch Unreal through Visual Studio, it is okay for me to use the editor version. I don't know if you can use the editor version if you use the first method that I mentioned. They do build slightly differently. Unreal might be able to pick up on that, but you might as well just do it that way if you have the two windows open. 
Again, for me, I'm going to pick Debug Game Editor. Apparently, I picked the wrong thing. Let's try that again. <laughs> Debug Game Editor, and then I'm going to launch. Now, if you haven't been on Debug Game Editor, like I said, I was on Development Editor initially, then it'll probably be a little bit of a longer load, especially if you have the engine code logic that we went over a few episodes ago in here, then it's going to potentially have to rebuild parts of the engine, and it could be very slow. Now, uh, as usual, I went over all this prior to uh, starting this episode test and made sure everything was good, so I did already build, so my build was very quick. It actually only took about two minutes for me, but it could take, I've seen upwards of 40 minutes on some projects, depending on how much was there, and if you've ever built in that version before, if there are any files generated for it that were in the saved folder in your Unreal content. Regardless, once you do get Unreal open, then you can, of course, do whatever you'd like in it, but we're only caring about packaging. So if you have nothing else to change, then you just go to File, and you can go to Package Project. Now, we're going to package through here. You know, choose our type. We're going to do Windows 64. But I'm going to go over the packaging settings first because they are actually very important, and they could change your project entirely when it gets packaged. So I have almost entirely default settings here. These are all the settings that will be on your project. If I mean, at least if you have the same version of Unreal, they can change between different versions of Unreal, but this is going to be generally what it looks like. Same with Unreal 5, really. So I'm going to go over what's important to change here and what we can actually use to our advantage while packaging. I'm not going to mess with most of the actual packaging section here. Uh, this is a little bit more advanced stuff, and it does have to deal with if you have to generate chunks for streaming games or uh, it, different things you can do with shaders, but we don't care about any of that right now. It's something we can get more into toward the end of the series when we're actually packaging our game, and we want to see performance enhancements and things like that. Uh, just to note, these can also be edited in the default game.ini. It doesn't have to be in this packaging pop-up here. Okay, and then you're going to scroll down to project, and this is where most of our stuff is going to be. So we have build, and the default setting is this, if project has code or running a locally built editor. And that's good, that should do the trick. But really, what this is saying is, should we build the project? And uh, mainly, in my opinion, you're going to want to build it if it's a C++ project. You don't there are reasons why you might not want to. Say, for example, you updated using source control, but you hadn't built, and you're not actually ready to uh, use that code in the package. So it could be user error, but you caught it soon enough, and you want to package using the old content. Could also be a few other things. But for me, and pretty much every case I've ever seen, we want to build it because, you know, the code could change so, so easily. And if we change the code, we probably wanted it to be different if we're ready to package so i'm just going to leave it on this but you could also uh also put always i think that's perfectly reasonable now for build configuration um this may update when you actually build visual studio it might pick up on it because it might change the ini file that this is being referenced under but if it doesn't you can just select the same configuration that you're using to launch with or if you launched in two separate windows, one Visual Studio, one Unreal, like I mentioned earlier, you will want to select the version that you picked, such as Debug Game. Now we're going to go into the staging directory. So the staging directory, you can hit this little ellipsis and uh, figure out where you want to put your project, or really put your package that gets generated here. Now... This is really just the default. When you go to actually package, you will have full control over where it goes and the ability to change it. But for now, I'm just going to put it where I want it to be. That way it opens up to that folder every time. So I put it on the D drive. Then you have full rebuild. If you want all the code to be rebuilt every single time you go to package, uh, you can read the little comment here. But basically, any modified files will be built if you have it disabled and the others will be left alone. That's pretty much good. That's how building works now, like even without packaging. You'll notice if you make changes, then the build should take a little bit longer than if you don't make changes because if you 
make changes, Unreal has to save out the different files. It has to edit files to keep track of the changes you've made. And once they're modified, it says, okay, this needs to be rebuilt. It'll say it's dirty or unclean, meaning it's not up to date. It's not the version that needs to be. And so you could do a full rebuild every time if you want. Uh, for me, I'm not going to because it'll make it a little bit longer. And also, if you have the engine code in your project, like I do, where I can edit the engine code to my, you know, to my want and to my will, then it's going to be extra long. It's actually going to rebuild the engine code as well, I believe. I haven't actually tested that, but I'm pretty sure it will have to do that because the engine code does rely on the code and vice versa. Uh, so, like, if I change the engine code, it will need to be rebuilt. So, I'm pretty sure full rebuild will build all those as well. And I really don't have a need for that. But that's what that does if you do have a need for it. Uh, for distribution is really for shipping and stuff. You can look at that if you'd like, but not really important here. And then include debug files was actually unchecked initially for me. I checked it because we do want to include debug files, at least while we're in debug game. I'm not sure if you want to include it in development or shipping. That's up to you. And, you know, it's on a case-by-case -case basis. But for us, we want to include debug files because we may want to test with it. We are in debug game. Remember what I said earlier? Debug game gives you the most information. So if I'm in debug game, I'm probably trying to get information about the package. And so thus I want to include the debug files. It will make it bigger though. So if you don't want to and you just want to do a, a test and see if it's in a good state, you can leave it unchecked. Now, blueprint nativization method is the last thing we're going to look at right here. You can open this up if you need to, but I'm not going to actually use it, use anything in here. But blueprint nativization, it's disabled for now. I'm going to leave it disabled because uh, I'm not going to go into depth and into the depth that this deserves. But I will be later in the fighting game tutorial series and probably other series as well that I'm working on. But really what this does is it will convert the blueprint assets into C++. So instead of using the U asset files, it'll actually run them as code, which is going to make it faster. There are some things that can be issues with that, like if you're using nodes that are editor only, and uh, you know if you're using debug only nodes as well, they can actually cause issues. But most of the time, this will make your project a lot faster. Well, I say a lot faster, considerably faster. It's significant enough you can see it. And it doesn't really hurt anything with the actual project because everything is you know blueprints are just c plus plus really anyway so yeah that's something useful that you can play around with i'm not going to do it here i'm just going to leave it disabled but feel free to enable it and check it out then you can close this and once you do that you can go to file go to package project go to windows 64 in my case, but you, you go to whatever operating system you want to package your project on, or really whatever operating system you want to run your project on. And they do have different things that they have to compile for and prepare for when packaging. So that's why they are different. You can do uh, PlayStation, Xbox, like that sort of operating system logic as well. Uh, but it's a little bit more advanced. So really, this is mainly for computers right now. This will be for, you know, downloads, installers, uh, zipped projects, Steam, or other websites or, or marketplaces, things like that. You can use Windows 64, and then you pick where you want it to go. Remember, we put the staging directory as the D drive, so it does actually go there by default, but you can select um, a spot, you know, every single time you do this, every single time you package. I'm not going to give it a name or anything. Uh, it, it generates a name for you. So I'm just going to select the folder here and we'll be good to go. And once you start this process, it is going to give you a little notification here and it will start building the project. If the build succeeds, it will then go into the cook process. And then if that succeeds, it will go into the archive process. And if that finally succeeds, then you will have your packaged project. Now, this can take a very long time, and I've only packaged once on this project before. It wasn't even in the same spot I'm doing it now. So it's probably going to take upwards of an hour, but it could be longer. I've seen in professional environments it take as many as eight hours. So 
uh, you you may be sitting here for a while. I would highly recommend that you don't edit code or blueprints while you're here. Technically, you can. Unreal does not stop you in any way. But if you do and the files have not been either built or cooked yet, then they will actually uh, get saved out with the changes that you make, which could be good if you want to make a quick edit, I guess. But a lot of times that could be bad because you're not entirely sure where the state of everything is. And so you could edit a file and you're like, I'm not sure if that's this issue is related to that change I made or you didn't think it was going to be in the, the, the package at all. So I'm going to let this run and then we'll see what happens when it's finished because it's going to be a long time. It's OK if you get errors. Most of the time you will get errors on the first time you try and package and you'll have to solve them. Also notice that this will take up quite a bit of space on your computer, especially when doing the debug game one. Even if you've cleaned up assets and stuff beforehand, doing the debug game is gonna include a lot of uh, debug files and information that's going to take up a lot of space on your machine. So you may get issues with not enough space on disk or internal heap errors. That just means you need more space to actually uh, finish the package. But otherwise, I will be back when this completes. Like I said, it could be quite a long time, and I don't want to just talk over and over about the same things for that long. So I'll be back in a little bit. All right, guys, and you can see that my package has completed now. So there were actually a few other commands I didn't mention, like stage and package, that I forgot about. But as long as they're all good to go, and you see build successful and automation tool exiting with code uh, with exit code equals zero, which is success, then you know that you've packaged properly. Now, I'm actually going to uh, close Unreal for a second. You don't have to do that, but I'm going to just because of some of my capture uh, programs that I have would be picking up on it, and I need to show you the executable. So I'd rather do that. So if we go into where our... Uh, directory was that we said we were going to stage it it will create a windows no editor folder there and that is where your package is now before we run this if you actually go to where your unreal directory is where that project that you just packaged is and go to saved and staged builds you'll see there's actually a copy in here that could be useful if you want the latest copy stored i actually don't uh, I don't have a lot of space on my C drive, which is why I put it on my D drive. So I want to get rid of it. So you can just delete it. So you can literally delete that. And then uh, I'm going to go back to where my actual one that I wanted is. And I'm going to go into the executable. It does have some other stuff because we have the debug game. So it's got a bunch of information and a bunch of uh, extra files that could be useful for debugging. But either way, you will have this executable and you can go in and play your game. Now, a few things to note right off the bat. So uh, one is the game should hopefully work as, you know, it should be very close to what you were playing in editor, hopefully. That means you're doing a pretty good job of making sure that everything doesn't just work in editor, but works outside of it too. Performance should be about the same if you're in debug game. Uh, shipping should probably be a lot fat or a little bit faster, but considerably faster. You'll notice that it is full screen, which is why it's being cut off a bit. It's actually full screen by default, and uh, we can change that, but we just never messed with it before. At least not in this fighting game template yet. So, uh, yeah, but you can see I can play my game, and it honestly works very well. The performance is about the same. The actual uh, rendering, the level streaming, it's all working as intended. Excellent news, sound, music, all included. I'm just gonna win my fight here. It's only two rounds. And uh, yeah, so once I do that, once I've won my match, I can go back to the main menu and all will be good, right? Well, actually no, because we didn't include any stages. So doing things like, uh, you know, exiting a certain level and then loading a, another level and trying to reload a level that we already exited won't actually work, believe it or not. And this is because of the stages that we have set up in our packaging settings so we're going to do one more thing before we go here but notice we can't actually exit the game by hitting escape you can press all f4 to exit your project but we will need a way to actually manually exit our game when people are not playing the editor now 
what we can do is go back into the packaging settings and we can actually add maps that we want to be cooked that way it doesn't just have one pass of each map we can actually uh, you know our level streaming will work properly and will include the maps that we need or will include every file you include every file it is a bit slower and it will uh, make the size a bit bigger however it could be what you want to do especially if you're good at optimizing and removing all files that you're not using or don't need so once this finally opens up there we go uh, you can go back into your project settings and packaging or go to the packaging settings how I showed you before and remember I said we weren't doing anything with packaging if you scroll down a bit there is actually a little arrow let me uh, do that so if you scroll down to the bottom of packaging there's a little down arrow you click that and it will bring up other options you have localization additional chunk data and then cook data so something I wasn't doing before is this so um, you have these this additional cook data here cook everything in the project content directory ignore the list of mats below so this will cook literally everything in the in the content directory everything in here and so uh, you won't miss out on any maps or any assets of any type however otherwise if you don't want to include everything you can do the um, list of maps to include in a packaged build you click add it's just an array and then you can go pick the maps that you want since they are in the persistent level it automatically uh, use the persistent level because that is our default map and mode the persistent level includes these other levels in it but as soon as they get unstreamed then you won't be able to go back to them that's why you saw we were stuck at the the load screen forever because we never decided to include these levels you just want to include your U maps here and then you can go back and forth between them or worst case scenario just check this thing cook all things in the project content directory and you'll be good to go anyway guys thank you so much for watching i'm sean the bro if this helped you please subscribe it does more for myself and the channel than anything else you can do I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership and my Patreon supporters and subscribers. Thank you guys so much for all the love and support. I really hope you enjoyed this episode and I always love to see what you come up with next. Lastly, if you had any issues with this episode, any of my tutorials or any questions on packaging, feel free to shoot me a message on Discord or in the comments. I'll be happy to assist as long as I can. And yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. So like I said, thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.